Okay, so good afternoon, and I'm Heather from Defined Learning, and I'm glad that you're back together with me or new for the first time. I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to get right into this today, and what I'm going to do is ask you to go to definedlearning.com or perhaps do you have an easy access button? Did your district do that for you? So is everyone in defined learning right now? Great. Hi. All right. Great. And since we're such a small group, I failed to say this. Please just unmute yourself and please just say, wait a minute, what did you just do? Or, you know, please do that. Don't even bother with the chat button. It's just a few of us here today. All right. It will just make it easier. All right. So you should be looking at the same screen I'm looking at, right? Good. Okay. So over on the right side, do you see the green button that says district projects? Okay, so when I mentioned to you earlier that we as a curriculum team saved some tasks according to the themes that were shared with us, we saved them and we put them in here. So instead of using all this on the left that we went over in our first session, you still have access to that. But just don't worry about it to make this simple right now. So just... Um, you could open a new tab or you could watch my screen. I said this to you last time. It depends, you know, how you like to learn what you want to do. If you want to actually click, open a new tab and get into find learning. So you're going to click district projects and you're going to see a bunch of stuff come up here. And if you notice on the top bar, it says all grades. It's highlighted. Here's what went on. A year ago, when your district purchased this, um, and I don't know if it was exactly a year ago, but close enough, they had planned to roll this out to you and COVID hit. So as you know, everything just kind of stopped. Like our original training was supposed to be last, say, March or April when COVID hit. So that's why, you know, Originally, the district said to us, can you put some tasks together, you know, to meet these themes? So you see a bunch, let just don't even worry about it. So I was, um, it was shared with me, grades two for plants and five for weather. Let's focus on that for right now. I do have some in there for grade three and four, but we won't even worry about it. If you're wondering what they are, grade three, I have some space ideas. In grade four, I have some ecosystem ideas, all right? But for today, we'll just do two and five. So go click on, at the top where it says pre-K to two, or you see I just clicked on pre-K to two. Don't worry about this top. Scroll all the way to the bottom because when we add something new for you, it always goes to the bottom. So I want you to pay attention to the three on the bottom. You'll notice they're all titled grade two first. These are the ones that we just put in here for you. So for the topic plants, these three would be what I would suggest or what our entire curriculum team would suggest for a rollout for plants, okay? So um, what I want to share with you is grade two, you're still in the primary grades. So the videos in the task, the wording in the tasks, the videos are animated. It's Scotty Stem, he's an animated character. Keep that in mind, that's just grade two. Once we roll on to three, four or five, they're not that animated anymore, okay? So again, I would like this to be about you. I have these grade two tasks and they're all wonderful, but I think for today, I'm gonna go into a grade five task and we could all do the same task. Or if you're like, no, I know I'm gonna be working with grade two at the end of April, I'll listen and I'll follow because remember, our whole format is set up the same. It would just be our wording in our videos that would be different. But this is where you find it. So these are your grade two and to look at it, obviously you would just hit view. I'm gonna scroll back up to the top 
and I'm going to click on grades three to five. So if you want to stay with me, we're clicking on grades three to five. Yes, Kim. You're muted. Okay. okay. So when you're clicking on like grade three to five, did you place these projects in that grade band? Or is that the, the whole, because I know some of them are very specific. Like the one I did with ecosystems, it was for grade two, but I did it with grade four and it was challenging for grade four. So yep. this band here that is like in our district tab, is that, is that, did you make those specific for Penridge yes. because you know that we teach weather in fifth grade? That's correct. Yes. Okay. So right. these were chosen based on the theme that you gave me. Okay. And if I go all the way to the bottom, like I'm telling you, you'll see a bunch here. You see the grade four ecosystems. Yeah. So you should see yours. Kim, which one specifically did you do? We did the one where the, um, the mayor asked them to create a park. Oh. And they had like the decomposers in the park and... Yep. Yep. So, yep. So I really kept it strictly to ecosystems. You'll see the grade four. Um, okay. if you're looking at my screen and they're all very good, but a very popular one we have is invasive species. Now that is specific to grade four, but what you're saying about the grade levels, I want you to know that we have a task aquarium designer, which definitely goes with ecosystems. In our main site, we have that labeled as a grade five task, but I labeled it grade four for you because you gave me a theme and I wanted to give you a couple options. Okay. So if, if it tends to be like you're saying, oh, well, the grade two, that was good enough for fourth grade. That's why you yes. don't get hung up on, I said that in our first training, don't get hung up on the grade level so much. You know, it's okay to, to, Pick one, a grade lower, a grade higher, you know, whatever you want. So if I scroll down, you see my grade five that I put and you see my grade three that I put based on just our themes that you gave me. All right. So these are the ones that were chosen for today. I'm going to pick because I don't know exactly what your content teacher wants to zero in on, but it meets PA standards for weather for grade five. And I get it, you guys aren't the content experts. So uh, my first suggestion to you is, you wanna try this with the kids. So I would find 15, 20 minutes, and I know time is hard to find, but if there's a plan period or something, that you would be able to physically sit by your co-teacher without students and you would get them into define learning or show them your screen and you would show them, I'm going to pick weather reporter, reducing the impact of severe weather. It goes over the basics about weather and it's always tied to real world content. So this one, you're going to be a meteorologist. Okay, so I would sit next to that teacher and show them because again, how do you know exactly what to leave on or what to turn off? If, if I'm talking out of turn here, you tell me, but that's making sense to me after I talked to Kim and Megan the other day, you know, you are the coach in this and you're showing how to do this, but you might not be the content expert. So you need some guidance as to, oh, I don't think my kids could do that illustration or I don't think they could create that product, that Facebook page. Okay, no problem. We'll shut it off. Yes, Kim. So just so um, you guys know, what I did was I chose the topic, the, the project. I sent a link to Heather Landis, who I was working with. She had to sign, she had to open up um, through PSD key to find learning. And then when she clicked my link, it opened up, it was able to open up the link. Um, does that make sense? Um, and then I did, I chose what we were doing for it because I already had her kids. Um, and we just kept it really simple, Re really simple. And, and I'm going to follow up on what Kim said. I'm going to suggest to you to keep it very basic. 
until you actually get in there, the kids get in there. If you don't, you're just going to feel overwhelmed or a little stressed out, okay? All right, so here we are. We're gonna go through grade five weather, all right? As we go through this, I'm going to make suggestions to you that 15 or 20 minutes, so it's meaningful for the teacher, the teacher sees the value and the students are engaged. I'm going to tell you, walk you through it and give suggestions about what to ask your, your co-teacher in, in their class who you're rolling it out with. And that way you'll know what to turn on or turn off. All right, so when you're in here, you actually hit the view button to go pull up the task. It should look familiar. This is what they look like when we go to get them. And if you only want to go read it, you could stay. You're in project preview right here at the top, the dark green project preview. So all we're doing is reading it. And you could click through everything and you could read what it's all about. All right. We're not going to read it right now. I want to actually go to customize. You might remember this from last time green button up at the top, just think, okay, the way the task sits right now, it is not super simple. It's simple to do. I just mean we give you so much in the task. It's too much for the fifth graders to do. So because we give options, we give voice and choice. So you click customize, all right? So you click customize. And because we are here in the district project, See on the blue tab where it says modify current version or create new version. We want to create a new version. That's the first thing you want to click under customize. Because if you modify the current version, think about that. You're modifying that version that everybody's going to see. So when your colleagues that aren't on here today, when Question. they go to look at, yes. Um, I don't see modify. Is that? Could that possibly be blocked? That we can't modify, see? we can only create? I only have create new version. Perfect. Hey, Perfect, I know why. So don't even worry about clicking on that. I'm not logged in as myself. I'm logged in, you might see admin at the top of my screen. And that's because I'm acting under false login. It, your administrators log in to see the tasks this way. And that's how Define Learning actually has control over it. So I asked for, for this. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to put your district projects in or do anything. So I have to be very careful when I'm in here because I don't want to modify anything. Okay. Thank you so much, Michael. I appreciate that. So you're just, you're in Create New Version. So let's give it a name. And I think you could keep, you don't need that grade five if you don't want it. But it makes sense. You're going to be in a fifth grade classroom, right? So if you don't want grade five, take that out. But I'm keeping weather, weather reporter. And I'm just going to put practice because I need to go delete this out of here when I'm finished. So, and you could put your name after it. You could just put, you know, um, Mrs. Kraut or, or whatever. All right. So give it that name. And I'm not going to turn any products off. You might remember these buttons right here. So there are five products in this weather task. Five is way too many. You heard Kim say when she rolled out her ecosystem, she did one. She picked a product called brochure. I'm going to recommend for your first time choosing one, two. Now they're fifth grade, so they probably could handle two, but because it's your first time, I'd only do one. And then, you know, if for some reason you change your mind, you can always go back and turn one on. So let's, we're keeping them all on for right now because I want you to see them as we walk through. So we're going to hit create and continue. Yes, Kim. Um, by, if we turn off some of those options, does that impact the questions that the students answer or do those questions always stay the same? We're gonna turn those questions off that you and me talked about in student check-ins when we get farther along. Okay, sorry. Okay, no okay. problem. 
No, I know that was important to you. So I wanted to make sure I hit it. Okay, so let's pretend that I'm co-teaching weather with you. You are the content expert. So I would get in here, I'd find that time with you, 15, 20 minutes and say, we have this great weather task. So I know you're going to be teaching weather or you already started it. And in an ideal world, you know, this performance task is not to teach every single content connection or standard that the fifth grade teacher needs to teach. This is a resource for that teacher. You might remember me saying that. So let's go through this. So it gives an introduction. So if I was sitting with you, so I'm going to use Kim. She's going to be my fifth grade teacher. I'm going in. So I would say, Kim, so in the task, there's the introduction in all of the tasks. And it tells them, it kind of sets the stage for being a meteorologist, because I know we're talking about weather. So there's a great introduction and there's a really cool career video. It's only six minutes. So when you're introducing weather, or if they already started, so what? I would say that this is a great introduction and the purpose is connect your classroom content to the real world. So can we use this as an introduction, Kim? What do you think? Yeah, I think that'd be great. I'm starting weather, you know, and you guys work out your schedule. Okay, Kim, so I'm gonna come in. We'll have the students log in because we'll share this link with them and on their Chromebooks or their iPads, whatever your students are using, you know, they could log in, they can wear headphones, watch the career video, and we could assign the guided questions. Take a look at these guided questions, Kim. You know, do you care about what a meteorologist does? The career video is going to explain to them what a meteorologist does. Do you think that that has value? Do you want me to keep that there? And Kim would say, yeah, I think that's really cool. I think especially for my higher ability students, you know, I don't necessarily use the word meteorologist with the kids, but that's a great add on for those kids. Let's keep it. The yeah. second one, you know, Kim's, Kim's looking at it and she says, you know what, Heather, they don't need to know the types of skills. Okay, great. So I'm just going to get to that question. It's gone. So I would kind of edit it with them if you have the time or at least go through it quickly, take some quick notes, and then you could go back to your office and your planning time and you could edit it then. How do meteorologists use data in their work? Kim told me that's not really important. Let's only keep one question. So the kids watch their video, they have their headphones on, and I ask them to only do one question because that's where maybe we'll have whole class conversation or maybe I want them to submit that question in the technology. So then when I go back, I'm only gonna have one question there to look at. At least I know all the kids answered it. Doesn't mean you have to score it. It's just holding them accountable. So there's some accountability, all right? So great introduction. Kim loves it. She wants to use it. I'm going to keep it in there. So I'm just going to hit save changes and continue to the next section. And remember, you could also click on the left side of the screen. Get me to explore the background. Heather, and, can I ask you a quick question? Oh, sure. Can they have, remind me, can they have that introduction read to them for the lower readers? So that paragraph that was the introduction, is there a read to the students feature? When they're we're in the student view? We're going to have it. So okay, we're good. going to, yep, we're going to have text to talk. And, um, oh, forgive me. Uh, it just won't be for this school year, though. Uh, our tech team told me it's either the month of June or the month of July. We're going to have that on there. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's going to be a great feature added. Um, and But that career video, if you're also saying the kids don't have headphones, well, no problem. So... Maybe you have, uh, I know in my school, we hook up, I hook up my laptop to my projector, uh, to my smart board. We watch our videos as a whole class. So obviously you could roll it out. You know, that's where you have your, you know, autonomy, your independence. I'm not trying to say it has to be the kids watch it. Okay. All right. So we're on to the next section. So I'm, I'm here with Kim and I say, Kim, so this is all based on real world connections. So will you look at the goal and the role with me? So here's what the case is. So they're learning about weather, learning about being a meteorologist. 
So they're going to educate the school community. Maybe you don't like the word educate because you're saying, and again, I don't, I don't mean anything, but just maybe our fifth graders in this class, maybe we don't want educate. Maybe we just want to say teach, right? So remember, you just click in the blue box. It looks like a word doc and I just go change it. So if something stands out like that, Kim said, Heather, don't use that word. They're not even going to know what it means. So I just changed it to teach. So they're going to teach our community about staying safe types of weather. So I'm even thinking about, does your school do any severe weather drills? Great way to tie in that connection. And I know you might do it at the beginning of the year. So the kids already have that knowledge of that. You know, I could even put a note in here, you know, at underneath the goal. And I could put, think about what we do during our, you know, weather drills. I won't keep going for lack of time, but you could put that in there. So the kids have something to relate to um, their role. So they're going to go ahead and they're going to report the weather to the educators um, as well as educators in the school community. Again, Kim says, oh, Heather, let's get that word educators out of there. So you get what I'm doing. I'm quickly going through it with her. And then to make it real, well, who am I really going to be giving these weather reports to? You know, a kid might say that to you, right? So you would say, well, your audience, they're going to be your peers, other students, maybe teachers at the school, parents, school community. You could change those words. Then we give the situation. So the teacher might say, wait, I don't understand. Are, are the students working on this? Are they reading this by themselves? Are we doing this as a whole class? So Kim's asking me this. So I say, Kim, really, really good. What do you think? The fifth graders, maybe you know them because um, you're seeing them as librarians or maybe you have to learn from your co-teacher. And Kim says, Heather, listen, I found out that everything we do has to be whole group if you really want them engaged or they have to be in groups and the groups, we have to be careful with how we're putting the students together. Here's a sheet, you know, I wanna share with you how I've done groups before. You know, whatever your co-teacher might say. It's important to ask that during this grasp part because, you know, the situation, do I need to explain it further to the students? Kim should be able to help me with that or my co-teacher, you know, so it's telling them what they're going to be doing. So you see that studying the weather patterns and, and things. Kim asked me to highlight some extra resources in the site. Now, remember, the whole performance task is a resource because if I'm the fifth grade teacher and I have to teach my students about different types of weather or severe weather to meet the standards, instead of just giving, the teacher might have vocabulary words that they need to know. That's great. But we could put those vocabulary words in the products here when they have to make the weather graphs or when they need to draw an illustration. Is that making sense? So the co-teacher is explaining the vocabulary words, rolling out the content. We're coming in and we're adding to it. And we are giving the kids real world situations because we find research finds, not we, research finds that the students retain more, they learn more um, using real world problems. Make sense? So Kim asked me to highlight some spots. You have the ability to do this. Or if the teacher says, oh my God, I use this really cool website. And you could say, I could put the link in the platform in the program. So here is one of those live links that I was saying, Kim, that we use. And it actually says to the kids, one rep web resource containing information about the weather is right here. And so this, this um, website, which is the weather channel. So if you're still looking at my screen, they could go on here, they could watch the videos, we could highlight some of the words. So, um, so, we have those links inside of the task too. Sorry, I lost my little tab underneath everything going on there. 
So, Kim, that's what I, I meant by some I have a of the resources. About that. Sure. And maybe Kim would know this answer better. There are a lot of ads on that website. Are we are we filtered out of that, or we are we would they be obstructed by all those? So I could answer some of that. So when I'm using it in my district, our district has filters and it won't allow certain things to come through. So it's hard for me to say exactly what Penridge has, but all of that does not show up. Some of them do show up, but it all it's all depending on the filters of the school. Would you know that answer, Kim? You're muted, Kim. I don't think we filter ads out. I don't think we're at that level. Okay. Well, what if we put it in Watchkin and then put it into, put the Watchkin link in? For a um, website? Would that work? I'm not familiar with that. Oh, it's, it's like SafeTube, like when you use a YouTube video. But it's for um, websites. Because you don't, you know, you don't want the kids to see the YouTube ads, right? Yeah. So Watchkin is like that. And then if you put the URL into Watchkin, I just have no idea if that would work with Define Learning or not. So I think that would be a great question for your tech department or ask. I know Megan was involved in setting up the tech side with Define Learning. So maybe that's something, an email to Megan, you know, to ask about that with ads. Does your school allow you to use YouTube videos? We, we embed We're them. Yeah, so go ahead, Michael. We are supposed to try to either embed them or view pure or, you know, school tube or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, I'm going out on a limb here, but because you're allowed to, I'm thinking they probably have some filters on them. We work with some school districts that they can't even um, in, put in uh, YouTube videos because they have them completely blocked. But that would be a definite question for your tech department. All right. So, so when you see links in here, that's because we added them. You will see some tasks that might not have a link. All right. Uh, I want to bring up grade two. When you're in grade two classes, we have what you'll see some resources of books, titles of books. Now you guys would know best, you know, um, if you could put in some uh, titles and authors of some books to use as resources with the themes. But you'll see that in our primary, we do that a lot because we understand that maybe all the kids, you know, they don't maybe have all this independence or that, you know, the use of the Chromebooks or the iPads, you know, as much as the intermediate grades would have. But there's an example of that right there. Um, I know you wanted me to point that out. Then we move on to what we were calling the products. And remember I said five is way too much. I would never do that. Even my first time rolling this out, you know, I, I picked two first time rolling it out and it was too much. Really one is enough. So with this particular one, I'm sitting with my co-teacher and I say, Kim, so we're learning about weather and we know we're acting as weather reporters, meteorologists, and we want the kids to pretend that they're doing this for our you know, class across the hall or whatever. What do you think would be most beneficial for the students in the class? So let's just look. And, and I bet the content teacher would be able to say off the top of their head, you know, what might be best. There is a description if they wanna read it, but would they want them to make a weather graph, weather poster, weather report, uh, the weather drills calendar, safety designs, which one makes sense? So Kim, after looking at those, she said straight away, oh, it would be really cool. The kids like making posters that fits this group really well. You know, we could, we could do it online. You know, they like using Google Draw or if they're not tech savvy, we can do markers and paper. And that would be great because the vocabulary that I'm teaching them in fifth grade, they could use some of that on their poster and they could report out. And you know what? It would help because we're trying to get them to talk in front of kids. Maybe we'll have them present their poster. You know, I'm just pretending, you know, what, what my co-teacher might say to me. So then I know we're going to do weather poster together. Now, 
if you notice, I can't shut them off right here. You might remember, oh, I think I'm gonna have a video playing. Sorry, let's shut that off. Um, we shut, we turn them off at the beginning there where we go to um, edit task at the beginning. Remember all five of them were listed there when we gave it a name. Yes, Kim, did you have a question? That was my question. If they were the same products that we would turn off from the beginning. Yes. Like if I turned them no. off there, would they still show up here? No, no, okay. you turn them off, then you're going to have them there. The kids are not going to see them. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. Yeah. If we, if we wanted to assign two, but have the children pick only one, is that possible? Or do they have to, in order to complete the task, do they have to do both? No, I mean, that's, that's your decision as a teacher. Normally, uh, and I'm, I'm not trying to scare you. It's just, it's a lot. You heard Kim say, it's a lot. It's really nice to see this from the student side too, when you're in the classroom. And I have to tell you that I came right out and said to the kids, it's my first time using this, you know, so you're going to be helping me too. And they loved that, but you could leave two on, let them choose. I would do that on my second go around of a task just because I would be more familiar, but that's my personal. I'm not telling you not to do it. Good question, Maria. And the, just so you know, the kids, their eyes light up. They think they have like this power. They're getting to make the decision and what they get to do, you know, in the class. So it is actually cool to do that. Okay, so Kim, my co-teacher said, let's do that weather poster. So again, I just, we are on limited time. So I write down in my notes, because when I go back later, I could just shut the other ones off. So we're at the bottom of our products and we're gonna go to the next part down at the bottom. And this is student check-ins. So when Kim asked earlier, do the kids have to do all the questions that are in there? Right, Kim, this is what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. So, this is the spot where you see them all together. And Define Learning puts in about 30 to 40 student check-ins, way too many. Yeah. So we already turned off. So you saw these going through. Remember the career video at the beginning? And I said, oh, Kim told me, nah, let's not do the data. Let's not do the skills. That's why they're off because I X'd them at the beginning. So they're already off for me. This one was important, so I'm gonna leave it on. Here's my suggestion for weather for your fifth graders. I would leave on maybe four at the most. I wouldn't leave on more than that. Yes, Kim. Has this been assigned to the classroom yet? No. Okay, all right. No, no. So, all right, question. so, yep. Is this a link, a direct link from the PSD key for the kids or something we have to give them? It's a direct link. They open it up. So in your world, you have all the classes. And when I assigned it, I assigned it to Heather Landis's class and all her students were able to go into my projects and it showed up under my projects. Is that similar to Seesaw? Yeah. The formatting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Not Thank you. Thank you. All right. So again, I'm just pretending, but I'm with Kim and we're almost at the end of this. Um, she helped me a great deal. So I knew what to leave on or off, or if she saw words really quick, like they're not going to know that or like, educate how I changed it. So these questions, what do we think here? Um, what do me meteorologists do? Restate your problem in your own words. We put that in every task. And I really think for your first time, the, the problem would be their weather report, what they're trying to solve all the, I would turn it off. I wouldn't even leave it on for the first or second task. I, that's an easy one to turn off. And then, so some different types of um, research here. So we said we were gonna do the weather poster. So if I'm not doing this, if I turn this off at the beginning, the graphs, this is the product, these are going to be off. I'm shutting them off now to show you, they go with the weather graph over here. This was one of the products. I'm leaving weather poster on. So I say to Kim, 
What do you think about these questions and your vocabulary, your content, your teaching in the class? What one or two do you think is valuable? Because remember, we only left one question on so far. So, oh, she says, you know what? We do talk about the types of weather for the type of year. So right here, what time of year would weather, would this severe weather occur? Leave that one on for sure. And you know what, Kim or Heather, we talk about how they stay safe. We do talk about taking shelter in a tornado or a hurricane or whatever. Let's leave those two on. So easy enough. Kim suggested we leave those on. They make sense. And I don't need any of these other ones because we're not doing the products. Yes, Kim. So the students answering these questions, are the videos within Defined Learning giving them the answers to these questions or do they have to go outside of Defined Learning to figure out the answers? Oh, no. So, so for example, let me go back up to what does a meteorologist do? It's right in that career video at the beginning. Okay. So, and that's why they're called check-ins. So think about this. So think about, um, we call it conferencing in my school district. So we conference with the students, say, when they're, they're writing um, a report on something, but we're actually meeting them side by side. Well, the student's going to answer this. What does a meteorologist do? Think of it like having that conversation or that conference with the student, and you're just looking at it as the teacher. You're going to get a little notice that they turned it in, and you could go see, oh, yeah, Michael answered. What does a meteorologist do? Except... Right, Kim, it's as easy as the button, accept or reject it when the students hand it in. Um, you know, it's nothing that's scored. So it's really like, it's a check-in. That's why they're called student check-ins. They watched the video and I know they answered. You know, I just skimmed it. What does a meteorologist do? And I just hit accept. So the kids know it's finished. All right. So as I scroll down, remember I'm not doing these products. So I just want to shut them off. And then, you know, what's important, Kim? What do you think? Have you been talking about brainstorming? Oh, Kim says, oh, I love that, Heather. You know, we do brainstorming. Or she says, no, I don't even talk about brainstorming with the kids. So depending on the answer, that's how I know whether to shut it off or leave it on. Uh, the analyze and decide, we don't want it. We don't want more than four questions. We have three so far. So... Let's see, maybe out of all of these, and these are like 21st century skills working together, what would be best? So I think if we were in non-COVID times and I was working in groups, I might want how well did the group work together and how did they contribute? I might leave that on. You know, maybe the teacher has an idea like, I'm really struggling. My kids need to learn how to work in groups. And that's not going to be during COVID time. I mean, it could be if they all have Chromebooks and they're at their desks, right? Because they're still looking at the same thing. Let's just do, what did you, what did you learn were your greatest strengths or your biggest areas for improvement? Because I feel like that's a great question for kids to grow anyway. So let's leave that on. That's the one Kim said she liked the best. So that's it. I left four questions turned on. Make sense? So these are things that the students can do independently and they could submit them right online to you, right through the program, okay? And then I'm going to tell you for your first time purposes, the next click that we do here, the standards and the skills, these are great but these are for a future time, or these are when you're beyond coaching your building, running your professional learning time that maybe you might be asked to do. These are extra. And when you have time, if you want to go in and look at these, you could. All right. And you see the products at the top, like we're doing the weather poster. So if I want to prove to my administrators, my standard that I'm covering through my weather poster, I would simply go in and I would click the standard and I'd hit save and close. It's a really cool feature, but not for your first time around. Okay, so just so you know. All right, let's see. I'm trying to think, Kim, what else you asked. Oh, I know. 
I'm going back into my edit, back into my edit. And my green buttons, remember they're all set up the same. I, I wanna hit number three, the do the research. You might remember these from last time. And Kim, I think you use these with your fourth graders, learning did, objects. Yeah. yeah. And these learning objects, please remember, I said this the first time, these are not to teach the content, they are to reinforce the content. There are way too many of them though. So in that time when I'm sitting with my co-teacher, which ones do we want? And you could tell just by the title of them. We're doing weather, I would definitely leave that one on. Patterns, I'm gonna shut it off. Cause and effect, I'm gonna shut off. And I'm gonna keep weather related hazards on. So I just keep two of them on. These are not, you don't have to do these whole class. They're meant to be independent. So the students would be on their Chromebooks or their iPads, headphones or in their quiet spot of the room and they would play this video. Very short video. It's reinforcing the content about weather and it gives them a little couple questions at the end. It's, it's fun for them and it buzzes them out if they're wrong and it gives them stars and a, like applause when they get it all right. And it's nothing that they could just keep trying it. It's not like it scores them or something. So there's a great resource right there. And don't forget we have constructed responses underneath it. So these are your ELA narratives and it's to reinforce the context, but this is what I wanna remind you of. And you need your co-teacher for this probably unless you know the students really well. So I would say to Kim, this is a really good short narrative on weather reporters but I've got two different reading abilities here. So you can see the flesh Kincaid readability. You could see the readability. And Kim says, oh, definitely use the first one. So I would just go ahead and shut off the one that's the higher readability. All right, so we have those. And then if there are additional videos other than the career video at the beginning, so you see that we have an additional one here called lightning. Mm, maybe I'm gonna shut it off just because it's our first time doing a task. I don't want too many videos and things in here. So this first one, meteorology, that is the career video that's at the beginning. Understanding hurricanes, you know, again, Kim would have to tell me we're really diving into it. I, I don't know if they would be diving into hurricanes so we could shut it off. So a lot of resources on that page. And Michael, remember we talked about the YouTube um, videos or those links. Let's say you as the librarian, you know a really cool weather website for some reason you were looking something up even for your own student at home or something, and you know something really cool. Or Kim, my co-teacher says, I use this link. So I would upload the link right here for videos. Or if I want to go to the copier and I want to scan in a really cool um, weather uh, poster, different types of weather or the vocabulary words that Kim, my co-teacher is using, she gives them some kind of handout. I could go scan it into my computer and I could upload it right here. And then guess what? The kids could just click on it and they would be opening that worksheet or that, you know, the weather definitions, whatever they want me to use. So can you go, that's can you go there. Back to that, please. Where you just, how did you upload stuff? I miss, yep. oh, I say it. Never mind. Yep. Right here. It. Yeah. And you could just pay attention to, we just put um, titles there, obviously, put your videos in the section or other links or a worksheet, like I'm saying. Okay. So it's just nice instead of running off copies all the time. I was thinking of grade two with plants. There are so many websites out there or posters with the plant parts, with the labels, you could just download that and put it in here. So they have an extra thing to click on to see the plant parts. All right. So now we went through all the blue tabs and it was saving it for you as you went along because every time you went to the bottom and we kept going on, it saves it. Now, Assigning it, Michael said, is it, is it there? 
in this, I'm, you use ClassLink. I'm not familiar with ClassLink. We, we use Google Classroom, but right up here, green button up at the top, assign share project. You might remember this from last time. Now, Kim, if you want to chime in, just because I'm not an expert with ClassLink, but it's still, it's listed for you right here, everyone. So we want to stay here, assign directly to students. All right. And see how number two says if you're using Google, Clever, or ClassLink. All right. So let me, let me move this out of the way here. And see the green add student down at the bottom? Kim, can you tell me if you did it this way for your students? Did you go I, to add student? No? No, um, I did, I assigned it. Can I, can I share my screen real quick? Is that possible? Um, I'm not sure, let me see. I'm not sure. I'm not using my personal Zoom account. I am using, okay. I am using defined learnings. Okay. Um, so what I did, I'll walk through it. Um, I did. I'm sorry. See, that's okay. Assign share project. How did I do this? Did you go share via link to students? And did you highlight this link and put it in class link? No, I, okay. So what we can do is when you add, so yeah, I clicked assign students, add students, and then all of my classes show up. Yeah. So, and you could do assign to all students in that class, or you can assign it. Like if it's a gifted teacher, assign it to like four students in that class. Yes. Um, but that shows up. So this is where you want to be. So it's that first, it's, this is what shows up, assign directly to students, all right? And then that add students button. And the reason why, if you're looking at my screen, don't forget I'm in under your Penridge admin part. So you don't even see my Google Classrooms. Like if I was logged in as Heather Wortman, you'd see my classes over here and you'd pick the class and you could select the students. All right, Oop, that's our alarm. So that's how you assign that. But probably Kim would help you with that part. Am I right, Kim? Just in case yeah. they needed help doing that part. Yeah, and it was All definitely right. like, when I was with the class, I'm like, just click and see if it's there. And like, I was, I didn't know it was gonna be there, but it was there. So I didn't, yes. didn't have to do anything extra. That's right, that's right. And they don't see all those, I just wanna remind you, they don't see like all these green buttons. Remember, this is the teacher view. What the students are going to see is what you leave turned on. So they're gonna see that career video at the beginning. They're only gonna see the questions that you leave turned on, those check-in questions. Um, the constructed response, that nice little narrative, I shut the higher reading ability off. They're only going to see what you leave on. So if you go to roll this out with the students and you're like, why are they seeing all those learning objects? Why are there still four there? And you could just say, I only want you to do weather patterns. You know, if you're in front of the kids and that's what you're doing. But you could make a mental note to yourself. I must not have shut them off on the teacher's side. Yes, Kim. Um Heather, is there an option where we can, as the teacher, see what the students see? Sure. Yep. Okay. So this is where you want to go. You could simply go to that share via link to students on the left side here. Okay. You could highlight that, copy that open a new tab and in the toolbar up at the top there, you could just paste it. And this is how you could, you're seeing this because I'm still the teacher, all right? But you're double checking yourself 
you're double checking yourself. Like, I want to go see if my question, remember my career video? Do you remember there was the data question and the skills question? Well, I'm in the student version. Yep, I did it the right way. I only have that one question. That's all I wanted to leave on. That's how you do it, Kim. It's as easy as copying and pasting that and just opening a tab and putting it in there. Okay. Um, all right, then can I, If you, I think if you stop sharing your screen, I can share my screen, I think. Okay. Stop sharing. I did, okay. So well, Larry, let me see. All right, do you guys see my screen now? Yes. Okay, so all right, my projects, there is. I don't know how I got all these on here. Oh my goodness, I don't know what I'm doing. All right, here it is. Mrs. Landis is producers and consumers. Okay, um, this is where I really struggled. So student check-ins, wait, student progress. So this is where I had, you can see I, I didn't know that we could delete the questions. So this was really time consuming to go in and then view each of these check-ins. Is there any way to streamline this besides deleting the questions? Because like this is, I then you have to go to the, to the questions, go to the student, and then accept, accept, accept. Yes. Do you but accept no, each no. question? That's because she has, if you X out of that, X out of your accept screen. Okay. If you notice, look at this, for this student here, so this Robert, if yes. you notice, she left on 22 questions. So that's, you really... You take the time at the beginning and shut them off like I was showing you. And that's why I said, and no matter what, even if you're well-versed in this, you really just want to pick about four questions because these are meant to be conversations. This is a check-in to see, okay, they're getting it. They know what a meteorologist is. They have it there. Okay. So think of this, think of this just like if you would hand your students paper pencil in your library, you wanted them to, you wanted to double check that they were listening to your lesson that you were doing. You, okay. If you have 20 students, you'd have 20 papers coming into you. So these are your students and these are their questions on it. It is terrible to look at this. You don't wanna leave on all those questions. The okay. thing is you have to remember people are using defined learning all over the country. So, you know, the curriculum team tries to meet a lot of needs and okay. content. So that, that's why it's so cumbersome because so many are on there. Okay. So what we Good question, did, Kim. Go, go ahead, Michael. Because uh, I see it, the illustration brochure and journal prompt, are they not done electronically? Okay. That's exactly what I was going to say. We wanted the kids off the computer. So we opted instead of doing like Google Slides or something, we opted to actually have them draw it out with the goal of getting them off the computer. And then today we were gonna upload it into here because from my understanding, the goal is that when these kids are in 12th grade, they have a portfolio of all these projects. Is there an easy way for us to upload that physical drawing? If you're going to do paper pencil, which is probably going to be the case in your primary grade, so say second grade, unless, and I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to speak out of turn, unless your second graders are really tech savvy and they could use Google Slides or Google Draw, maybe your tech teacher, maybe you have a classroom teacher that they do this. So that's, that's really easy to upload. When I was doing first grade with the tasks and they were drawing their illustrations, what we did was we actually tag teamed. We had some of our fifth graders and sixth graders come down. They were like tutors, you know, and the teachers loved to have some of them come down. They took a picture with their Chromebook or their iPad, depending what class we were in. They took a picture of, I did animal adaptations in first grade that I'm thinking of with the uploads. They took a picture with the iPad, the pictures on the iPad, and then the fifth and sixth grader helped 
they uploaded it through the child's account. Okay, so okay, so, it would so actually, they took a picture with the camera on the Chromebook or the iPad. I don't know what you're using, but okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's the easy way to do it with a physical product. And if they are using um, a tech, um, let's say Google Slides, Google Draw, whatever, Michael when they get to the product on the student side, it actually says to them, submit product. They click on it and it says, where do you want to get this from? Your Google Drive, your desktop, wherever. And they go get it from there and they hit upload and it comes directly to you as the teacher. Okay. Yep, two options there. Uh, it's a lot easier doing it tech-wise, you know, other than the steps of taking that physical picture. Now, I will tell you, our fourth, fifth, sixth graders, they did drawings as well. They're able to take the picture and upload it, no problem. It's just the little ones, um, you know, and actually, uh, after they did it, first and second graders a little more, kindergarten were not uploading, but first and second graders, they start to learn the clicks. But as you could imagine, it takes a couple times, so... All right, now I know we're out of time. I, I really, I don't like keeping people a lot longer. We're a couple minutes past five, but I am happy to stay on here. If you want me to show something else, if you want me to go over anything, I would like to show you super quick guys. And I'm gonna send this to Kim, if that's okay with Kim. I made just a little, it'll be my email. So please, and Kim has my email if you want to email me more questions. But Kim, what I did was when I was talking you through the steps today, everybody, I just made this little slide quick. It's not even in complete sentences. These were the questions or my ideas. I picture myself going in to Kim's class that 15 or 20 minutes. So Kim, we're going to do weather together and I have defined learning open. And these were the questions that I was going through with you today. So how about we use this as an introduction? And if Kim says, oh, but I already talked about what a meteorologist is, that's okay. Can we still use this? Because the kids could even do it independently. It'll give us five minutes to catch our breath before we log into the next part. You know, And that's just being real, right? When you're in the classroom with the kids. And so I just put questions here or reminders that maybe you wanna get your edits and your tasks by asking your co-teacher about these. Make sense? I don't know if that's helpful or not, but after I talked to Kim the other day, I thought I want to come up, it sounds to me like you guys are almost like coaches for this, for the classroom teachers. And I just wanted to come up with some questions that would be helpful on your part to ask that teacher as you click through it on your computer so you're not sitting with them for a half hour. You don't wanna waste a whole planning period on it. So I will share that with Kim and she could share it with you guys. If you wanna use it, fine. If not, that's okay too. Thank you, Heather. You're welcome. And I really hope we could get back together because as Kim saw, um, rolling it out the first time, she was a little like, oh, it looked different, right? From the student side, Kim. And then did, she told yeah. you, so a struggle or an improvement was those student check-ins. She told me the other day, Heather, that took so much time. So when I hung up with her, I thought, okay, I need to help with this. And you might say something else. You might say, this, this was wonderful. This was easy to do, but this was a little harder. So I suggested to Megan, I really hope I could get back together with you guys after you roll out your first one, because that's how we're gonna get more efficient or before you stand in front of your colleagues, you know, to roll this out too. You have your experience, we get back together, you brush up a little more, or learn a little more, and then you're ready to roll it out for some professional learning time with your colleagues. Um, Heather, one of the other things I struggled with was making sure the classroom teacher had the same access that I had because I'm the one that created the project. Mm -hmm. So that was, yeah. 
it's it just got very confusing because it wasn't like it's her class it yes. just got really confusing yes it shouldn't be confusing i know i showed this to you in the well i shouldn't say i know i think we did I think we did in our first training. There's so much. This is what I mean by a follow-up and your feedback to Megan would probably be beneficial. But um, I want to show you something. This is not, this is not hard. If you want to take a quick little note and it'll be on this recording. <coughs> Do you see where I went? And your name is usually up here. This one says admin because remember I'm in Penridge admin. If you go to create group, See where I am right here? Create group. I'm going to do this. Hopefully we could delete it. I hope I don't do something. Mm. Like I said, if I'm... I'm just going to call this Penridge. You could call this, you know, fifth grade with Mrs. Kraut. Wh whatever it is, okay? Sorry, I spelled it wrong. Um, so I would, you want to label this, what you, who you're working with. All right. So Penridge, and I'm not going to put Mrs. Kraut. I'm just going to call it Penridge right now. You hit create group. Okay. And are you looking at my screen right here? Do you see group access code? And it's this five, this little five symbolic code here, V Z Q A zero. I would just say to Kim, my co-teacher, Kim, here's the access code. Send it in an email, whatever you want to do. And is this before or after I've assigned it to the class? Well, I would want to do it before because this is even an easy way. If I was you, I would, I would go in and share it with the teacher. She'd have access to it, you know, and it will update behind it. So, okay. So I give this to Kim, my co-teacher, and she goes up to that little, when she's logged in, same place, go up to it. And she hits join group. It's as easy as that. Okay. And you know the code you gave her? V Z Q A zero. And she hits join group and it says I'm already a member. That's because I'm in this admin site. It's gonna say, it's gonna say success, you joined the group. Just like it says success all the time, all right? So when you join that group, then when you log in, you would simply go right here, top bar, my projects, okay? And you'll be sharing your projects. All right. I saw an easier way. Go ahead. Well, do you see where you have Bucks IU, Penridge School, just Penridge? I have Sellersville Elementary School. I click that and I get the list of all the teachers and I can just click on the teacher's name. So I just clicked Penridge. That's what you're telling me, right? No, you just, you don't have all of Penridge. I have another tab that says, Sellersville Elementary School, which is my uh, building. Uh, and then okay. it's all the teachers in Sellersville Elementary School, and I can just click on that. Okay, but let me just caution you. Be careful if you don't want to have every single teacher. That's why you might want to create your smaller group, just fifth grade teachers or second grade. Does that make sense, Michael? Yes. I wouldn't want especially learning something new, just like you might feel like it's a lot, you know, I wouldn't want you to edit a second grade task and a fifth grade task and share this with all teachers. And then they're like, I don't even know which one to look at. I'm not sure. I'm okay. just pointing some things out. You know, you can make it specific. So, okay. Can you then delete those groups if they change? Like if there's a sick, you know, a sub comes in. Can I get rid of the other teacher and put the sub in? Or can I just get rid of the whole group? Oh, they would just need a login for defined learning. Yep, that's all. They would have to be part of it because what happens is, like I said earlier, Megan, 
uh, had originally given all the emails. She worked with the tech department and gave all your emails to defined learning. So they have a login. So it would definitely be possible, but like that long-term sub or whatever, they'd have to have uh, an email login. Okay. All right. Thank you. No problem. And you know, Kim, this is a perfect example of a, another, a good follow-up because the group is definitely um, a great tool to have in define learning and sharing the tasks. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, it's just, there's so much you could see we're over our hour and I apologize, but you know, I, I'd love to share my personal account with you and share some tasks. It's just, you know, we would still need another 10 or 15 minutes. So, all right. But I think that creating the groups is easy enough to, to share that. All right. Anything else? Um, okay. So, uh, teachers, <laughs> um, I'm going to do this weather one with my, our hybrid is collapsing. So I'm going to do it with them. It's going to be a smaller group. So like, if you guys want to go along with that and I can share anything I do, you know, I'd be happy to do anything like that. Did you switch the library class, Kim, or did you go into their classroom? I did it. I went into the classrooms because I was co-teaching because it was ecosystems and it was like the decomposer. I don't know any of that. Right. So, and even like getting the physical, like they did the brochure and a writing prompt. Like, I don't even know like what materials they have. So it definitely was good to have it as a co-teaching. Okay. Um, and I had the time, like I did have the time during um, day four. So and I'll have to What if we don't have the time? So I'm concerned about, so I have six classes coming up in day five and I've been subbing. So how am I gonna get into a classroom to do this and then also do the PD before the end of the school year when PSSAs are coming? <laughs> so I guess that's my concern. Are, are, your, are your, do you have five in-person classes? Well, they were supposed to be hybrid, but our hybrid is collapsing as well. So I have okay. five in-person and one virtual. Okay. Yeah, see, I'm just the opposite. I, that was my day one. I wouldn't have had the time on day one. Right, uh, so I'm, I'm just concerned being able to get together, do the project, and then put a PD together when it's PSSAs and everything else that the teachers are doing as well before the end of the year. So it is like, Tony's being reasonable, um, okay. but he wants it rolled out. But I mean, that's totally logical. Um, so it's not going to be, he's not demanding something that's not feasible for us to do. Okay. So perhaps that's a conversation, like we said earlier, and it sounds like a bunch of you are saying that. So, you know, um, you roll out the first task, your goal is by the end of the year, and maybe, you know, talk to who you're mentioning, Kim, about, you know, PD, either at the very end or at the beginning, you know, that everyone may not be ready yet. You, you really like it. You want to be well prepared and you want to roll it out before you go ahead and you coach your colleagues along. Just a suggestion. Right. I can see trying it out with one of my library classes since I have so many library classes, if it's a, a topic that I feel comfortable with, but I'm just looking realistically because day four is ending and Right now I have a light schedule, but then I've been pulled to sub and um, <laughs> do other stuff, getting ready, helping in the classrooms with research and stuff. So it's yes. just been a little, a little bit hectic. So I'm just concerned about, I don't wanna not do my part and I'm excited about trying it, but it's a little right. bit I hectic. think I think the principals need to be on board. They need to know if that's the case that we need to do this. Cause I get pulled for every department meeting, or not uh, not department meeting, every I IEP meeting, right, all right, the time indeed. study meetings, every yeah. time a, a teacher's absent, I'm subbing more than I'm actually doing anything else right now. Me and too, so, Maria. Which is fine, but right. like my principal knew, hey, you know what? Like this time is blocked out, and if a if a teacher's absent, I'm not available. Right. Right. Um, if it's okay, Kim, and and with everyone. Um, 
Kim, I have to fill out a follow-up after our session today. So if it's okay, I'm going to express some of these concerns and possibly saying to come up with a plan for rollout um, and saying that we're all willing to roll out a task by the end of the year. That's correct, right? Michael, yeah. Beth, Maria, right? Oh Kim? yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yep, um, but the concern can might- Can we stop recording? Sure. <laughs>